Hello, I'm Kevin Zettel, the Technical Marketing Engineer at Infoblox, and today we're here to talk about Infoblox's new integration with McAfee DXL. Today, we'll start by talking about Infoblox's integration with McAfee. Then I'll show you two use cases that can occur on your network, and how this integration works for you. Next, I'll show you an integration overview and a step-by-step -step process into integrating with McAfee DXL. Finally, I'll show you a working example of the integration. Ecosystem is Infobox's product that allows you to connect yourself to other security platforms such as McAfee DXL. Infobox combined with McAfee DXL allows you to respond faster to threats by automatically notifying you when a threat has occurred on your system and to help prevent the damage before it has been done. These notifications are in the form of contextual data that helps you rank threats and determine policy actions. Currently, companies spend tons of time and resources to secure threats on endpoints and to prevent malicious attacks from hurting their company. However, there is a lack of ease and timely access to these network changes, which prevents you from taking the correct action. This is a big reason around 90% of malware uses DNS to carry out its campaigns. Infoblox and McAfee DXL integration can help bridge this gap. McAfee standardizes communication for all endpoints, networks, and other security events allowing for a stronger threat detection system and quick response across the IT landscape. Infoblox discovers your networks and devices and identifies malicious activities such as data exfiltration through DNS. Infoblox can then publish these events with context. All this gives you increased visibility when taking actions to respond faster to network changes and threats and to secure operation efficiency on your network and endpoints. Now, let's look at our first use case on a security event. In this case, we'll look at a security event that can occur on your network. First, an affected user tries to set a bad DNS request to access a malicious site. Second, the Infoblox device blocks the request from being made. Third, the block request triggers Infoblox's ecosystem, which sends information to McAfee DXL. Finally, using McAfee subscriptions, you can retrieve and view the information about the security event. Now let's look at that in action. Here I'm making a DS request with a simple dig command. Here you can see Infoblox blocked the request, as you can see with NX domain. Next, on McAfee's side, you can see a new security message was sent to McAfee with details on the security event that just occurred. Now let's look at our second use case. In this case, we'll look at a general event that can occur in your network. First, the client sends a discovery request to connect to the internet. Second, Infoblox accepts the request and gives the client a lease to use its services. Third, the new lease triggers Infoblox's ecosystem and sends information to McAfee DXL. Finally, using McAfee subscriptions, you can retrieve and view the information about the lease that was just handed out. Now let's look at that in action. Here I'm, making a connect Here I'm connecting to the client's computer enabling the network, which sends out a request. Infoblox accepts the request, and when I hit refresh on Infoblox IPAM, we see two new, two new leases were handed out. Next, on McAfee's side, we see two messages were sent to McAfee with details on the leases that were just handed out. Now, let's do a quick overview on the integration with McAfee DXL. First, Infoblox's community site, you want to download templates for the McAfee DXL integration. Second, go to your Infoblox interface, and here you want to upload the ecosystem templates that you just downloaded from the community site. Add a DXL endpoint, and add a notification, all in that order. Finally, subscribe to a topic you want to receive information for on McAfee site. Now I'll be showing you how to set everything up. First, you want to go to Administration, Extensible Attributes, and here you'll be adding three extensible attributes. DXL Last Event Sent At, DXL Sync, and EPO GUID. DXL Last Event Sent At tells you the last time the event was sent to DXL side. DXL Sync allows you to decide if you want events of that object to be sent to DXL side. EPO GUID is required for CEF events to trigger automated actions using DXL Task Manager. Note, if an EPO GUID is not set, a random GUID will be created for that object. Next, you want to go to Grid, Ecosystem, and Templates. Here you can see the templates that are available on Infoblox's community site. 
you can pick and choose which templates you want based on the events you want to keep track of, whether that be host, lease, network, range, reservation, or threat events. The templates are just a simple JSON file with some simple logic. However, some important features include the instance variable, which can alter the flow of the template's logic, giving you options. I'll also show you how to change the instance variables in a minute. For now, we see the DXL host event, which has two instance variables. DXL message format, which is used to decide if you want to send the message to the DXL as a CEF format, as normally the message will be sent as an open DXL format if untouched. The operations type, which gives you the ability to decide which types of events you want to send to DXL, such as delete or modify or add. By default, all events are sent, however, you can change that if you like. Other templates with the same instance variable include the DXL network events, DXL range events, and DXL reservation events. There are two templates with slight differences to the instance variables, which include the threat RPZ or tunnel event and DXL lease event. They only have a DXL message format option. Next, we want to go to Outbound Endpoint. Here you'll be adding a DXL endpoint. The information you'll need to enter is things like the name, the vendor type. Then you're going to generate a client certificate. Once you generate it, go to the EPO side. Here, under the server settings, under the DXL certificates, you're going to edit. And here you're going to import the certificate you just created or generated. And here you're going to export all the broker certificates and broker list. Then you go back to our side, and you're going to go ahead and click the CA certificate and enter in the certificate you just up, uh, exported from the DXL side. You can export this information if you wish. After that, enter in the WAPI integration username and WAPI integration password. For best practice, it's suggested that you select the Gridmaster candidate. For, for demo purposes, we're using the current Gridmaster. After that, go ahead and add the brokers that you just exported from the DXL side. After that, make sure you hit test connection and make sure a connection is made. It could take one to two minutes for this to occur. After that, we're using debug for demo purposes. However, it's suggested to not use debug. Finally, extensible attributes, we have none. Next, we want to go to notifications. Here you can decide what type of events you want to have trigger the ecosystem templates. Under general, you have things like the name of the targeted endpoint. Here we can see the DXL endpoint I just showed. Next, under rules, you can decide what the event and the rules to that event you want to have trigger the template. In this case, object change host address IPv4 events that have a network view that is equal to default will trigger the template. Next, under templates, you can decide which template you want to trigger when the rule is matched. Once you choose the template, you are given the instance variables to that template. For DXL message format, simply delete the CEF or leaving it blank will automatically send open DXL messages. For operation types, you can delete and reinsert the types of events you want to be sent to DXL Messenger. Finally, the last thing I should show you is the DXL RPZ events. There is a special tab called Deduplication, which eliminates duplicate information that you may not want to see multiple times. Simply click Enable RPZ Event Deduplication and choose which duplicate information you want to ignore. The final part of setting up the integration is to go to McAfee EPO side and subscribe to the messages. Clicking SI DXL Task Manager, then clicking Add New Product button, you can add a product name list. Once you have created the product name list, click on the Actions drop-down and select Subscribe to Topic and insert the topic you want to subscribe to. Simply follow the rest of the video if you make a mistake and want to delete anything. The reason we are unsubscribing and deleting product name list here is because for this demo we will be using a product name list that has already been set up called Infobox. Now I'll be showing you everything in action since the integration has been set up. Here I'm adding an IPv4 host. You can see the extensible attributes here at the bottom have been updated. Then on the EPO side, under subscriptions, you can see the information was sent. Next, I'll be adding a reservation. However, I'll be changing the sync extensible attribute defaults, making sure that the information is not sent to McAfee's site. 
And at the bottom, you can see the extensible attributes were not updated. Then on the Kathy side, you can see the information was not sent. Next, I'll be starting a leak from my computer that I've set up. Here, after a hit refresh, you can see the leases have been updated. And on McAfee's side, two messages were sent. Finally, I will make a response poly zone hit from the lease I just set up. As you can see, an X domain response was given, proving that it was blocked. And on McAfee's side, information about the RPZ hit was sent. In case you did not understand or missed what was said in the video, here are a few key points of importance to remember. Envelbox and McAfee DXL together allows you to quickly and efficiently respond to network events and threats. It does this by automatically notifying you when something has occurred on your network and gives you contextual information that supports you in making decisions on prioritizing threats and policy actions. Well, thank you for watching. All documentation related to the Infoblox and McAfee integration can be found at the Infoblox community website at the bottom of this page. If you have any other concerns or questions, you can find me or any other of the experts at Infoblox at the Infoblox community website. Thank you for your time and have a great rest of your day.